670 horsepower. You heard that right, 670 horsepower. Tesla could easily create a higher performance version of the Model 3 and Y really quickly with the parts it has in its parts bin. Let's stick around and talk about it. Welcome back to the Engineering Perspective channel. If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button. Tesla has a lot of known vehicle development underway. The Semi, the Roadster, the Cybertruck, and RoboTaxi, plus all their other efforts in energy, Tesla Bot, Dojo, AI, and likely other items. However, the Model 3 and Y are generating almost all of their revenue. They have a wait list for all their vehicles, so it's always economically in their best interest to generate maximum profit from each vehicle sold. This is why you typically see the wait times lower for their Plaid and Performance versions. The cost of additional hardware to go from the regular version to the Plaid or Performance is small compared to the profit increase, so it makes sense to sell as many higher performance versions as the market will take. One key item that can drive demand is horsepower. This is a key reason I can see Tesla releasing a ludicrous or plaid version of the Model 3 and Y in the near future. Now let's talk about how they can do it. To accomplish a higher performance, Tesla will need to improve their powertrain, but it just so happens that Tesla has everything needed in their back pocket already. There are three main parts that are needed to create this higher power, the battery, the inverter, and the motor. The first item is the battery. Tesla clearly has an arsenal of battery options, and even the 1865 batteries using the Plaid can put out sufficient C-rate for performance. However, I believe this upgraded option will be contingent on the 4680 cells making it into the three and Y. I wanna give a quick shout out to some great channels I'm following for the latest on the 4680. Jordan on the Limiting Factor channel is doing a deep dive into the 4680 cells itself. Brandon on the Five Years Ahead channel did a great review of potential battery pack configurations and potentially higher voltage combinations. And of course, Sandy and the team over at Monroe Live. If you're watching this video, you already know who they are. Let's do a simple exercise and go back to the battery day presentation and the basic graphic showing the 5x capacity and 6x power. While they were short on details, the way I read this is that the 4680 cells will be capable of higher C rates due to lower electrical and thermal resistance. Thus, Tesla can use the same general battery pack capacity and size, but put out more power. However, looking at the latest information on the first teardown of a standard Model Y pack with the 4680, I'm left scratching my head a bit as they appear to have reduced voltage. Assuming the 4680 cells have the same nominal cell voltage of 3.7 volts as the 2170s, Tesla reduced the pack voltage by 16.8 volts, having only 92 in series versus the 2170 pack having 96 in series. As you can see here, the existing 4680 pack would have a nominal voltage of 340.4 volts versus the 355.2 for the 2170 long range pack. We will need to do a deep dive on this as we learn more. Tesla's focus on high current versus high voltage seems to be counterintuitive at face value. To wrap up this battery discussion, my perspective is with the amount of battery chemistries and the ease at which they can configure new pack arrangements, I have no doubt that they can put together a pack with higher discharge C rate than the current 2170 pack. Now let's talk about the performance upgrade hiding in plain sight, the inverter and motor combination that Tesla already has on the shelf. If we go all the way back to a great video done by Professor John Kelly on the Weber Auto Channel, he highlighted the modularity of the latest Tesla motors and reduction gear sets. Then a few months later, the Engineerics channel showed the teardown of the Plaid rear drive unit and highlighted it was using the Model 3 inverters. And finally, Monroe Live further confirmed that the same Model 3 inverter fits in all Teslas. What this means is that Tesla can swap inverters and motors between all of their current production models. So let's take a quick look at what motors they have in their parts bin, and I pulled all this information from the US EPA database. The current Model 3 Performance has 131 kilowatt AC induction front motor and 190 kilowatt permanent magnet rear motor. The long range Model S has a 247 kilowatt permanent magnet front and a 247 kilowatt permanent magnet rear motor. 
Note, this is the first time Tesla has used a dual permanent magnet motor in a vehicle, at least to my knowledge. And the Plaid Model S has a 250 kilowatt permanent magnet motor in front and dual 250 kilowatt permanent magnet motors in the rear, further reinforcing that they're stepping away from the induction motors. So very quickly, you can see the options available for a drop-in replacement in the Model 3 and Y. We already know the inverters are the same, the rotors can be interchanged, and also the gear sets can be interchanged. Now here are the combinations that could be likely for an upgraded performance ludicrous or plaid Model 3 and Y. Option one, just upgrade the rear motor from 190 kilowatts to 247. An increase of 57 kilowatts or 76 horsepower, it would be a total horsepower of 508. This may not require an upgraded battery pack, but regardless, it would be the easiest way. If it truly is a 76 horsepower increase, it would likely put the Model 3 into the high 10 second quarter mile range and the Model Y into the low 11 second range. Likely a half a second improvement in the quarter mile over the current metrics. However, I do have suspicions that the Model 3 rear is actually closer to the 247 kilowatts and Tesla is currently underrating it. Option two, switch the front motor to the existing Model 3 and Y rear motor making the front and rear both 190 kilowatts for a total of 508 horsepower. This would perform the same as the first option in the quarter mile. Option three, copy the long range Model S motors. I don't believe these have the carbon wrap rotor and potentially could be the same rotor that's in the rear of the Model 3 and Y already. But I find it interesting that Tesla rates the long range motors three kilowatt difference than the Plaid, but maybe there's some differences in the power curve. But I digress. If we have front and rear 247 kilowatt motors, this is a total of 662 horsepower, a massive 232 horsepower increase over the current performance versions, at least on paper. This is the option that I think is most likely and would probably require an upgraded battery pack, but this would mean a low 10 second quarter mile times in the Model 3, and I've already seen long range Model S running mid to high tens. Option four, my personal favorite is to use the dual plaid motors with carbon wrapped rotors. Since these are 250 kilowatts each, this means a total horsepower of 670. But the benefit with this option is that there's a very flat power curve at high speeds. This would likely mean a low 10 second quarter mile time in the Model 3, and if there is a power curve improvement over the long range motors at higher speeds, it could possibly even be touching the high nines, which is in the realm of possibility. I'll have to run some numbers to see how close it would get. And finally, there's other combinations like three or four motor layouts. However, the engineering tear up would not be worth the cost and complexity to the Model 3 and Y manufacturing lines. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.